What's up everybody, this is Gig here again, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk just a little bit about a very powerful Witch Doctor spec right now, known as the uh, Jade Harvester spec, or the Jade spec as some people say, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's some very important things that you need to know about this, uh, this gear set and this build, and one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, is you need to have the six set Jade Harvesters uh, gear. Um, and you need to get that six set bonus right there that you're looking for. Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time, effects on enemies instantly dealing their remaining damage. So you either need to get all six pieces of the gear set, which I wouldn't recommend, or you need to get five pieces of the gear set, and then the Ring of Royal Grandeur right over here, which lowers the number of pieces that you need for a set bonus by one. So the, the five set would effectively give you the six set, which is what I'm doing right now. And uh, the reason why I would recommend getting the ring is because you're going to want this this helmet as well, the Quetzal Quotal, which the Locust Swarm and Haunt now deal their damage in half the normal duration, um, which essentially doubles their damage, um, except for the fact that um, you're, you're doubling your damage, but you're halving their duration. But if you're using Creeping Death, which is a passive, the duration is so long that even though it's half the normal duration, it doesn't really make a big impact. So you're essentially just effectively da doubling the damage of, of Haunt and Locust Swarm, which is incredibly important for this uh, for this spec. Uh, other things that you're going to want to get, uh, you're going to want to get as much Elite's damage as you can, and I'll show you why. So I'm actually using a Sunkeeper, which has 27% extra Elite's on it. Uh, normally I use a Stone of Jordan. Uh, I'm using a Unity for another reason. But Stone of Jordan is Elite's damage. You want to get cold damage as well because Haunt is one of the skills that you're going to need for this build. And um, that uses cold damage. So I have cold damage on my, uh, I believe I have it on my Bracers. Um, so that's also really important. Um, I like to use a Harrington Waste Guard. That's also really important as well because whenever you click a chest or any other uh, item that you can click on in the ground, it gives you 112% increased damage, which is really, really important for certain situations. You don't have to use it, but it makes a pretty significant difference. Besides that, the, um, you know, the, the Ucarian Serpent, um, Ucapian Serpent, um, this is pretty good for the, for the damage mitigation because of zombie dogs, but you don't need to have one. Um, and everything else is, is, you know, you don't need to have it, but it helps out. I'm using the strong arm bracers, which give, uh, gives uh, me a 22% extra damage for 5 seconds after knocking back monsters. And I'll go ahead and explain why you want that. So, um, besides that, uh, the, uh, um, the, the amulet that you use doesn't really that important. Um, the weapon isn't super important, but the Sunkeeper extra leech damage is pretty good. And uh, your other ring, again, isn't super important, but a Stone of Jordan is nice because of all the elites and all that stuff. But you need to have the five set uh, jades. And you need to, essentially, you need to have the Quetzalcoatl because it doubles your damage uh, effectively. So that's what you want for the gear. Um, in terms of skills, it's really important that you know what skills you want uh, for this build. There's some very, very important skills. Uh, one of those is Haunt. Um, so I'm using Haunt Re Resentful Spirits. I think that's the best one to use for this spec. Uh, Soul Harvest is a must-have skill. I'm using Siphon. You don't have to use Siphon, but it's, you know, extra life. Um, Piranhas is really good as well. It, it's The reason why it, you, I use Piranhas is because of the 15% extra damage from the knockback, as well as the strong arm bracers that I actually have on my character, which gives you an extra 22% um, damage five seconds after being knocked back. So it's effectively, you know, 35% or so extra damage. Um, some use, summon zombie dogs, uh, it's just a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra healing if you're using leeching beasts, plus, uh, a lot of the damage that you take is redirected to your zombie dogs, so, zombie dogs, so it's effectively more, uh, more DPS. This skill is also really important, Locust Swarm, uh, Pestilence is really, really, really nice. That's gonna be a very important part of this build, and I'll show you why. Uh, Piranhas, Piranado, definitely get that one as well because that's the extra damage and it also acts uh, as black, sort of like black hole for a wizard where it, it pulls mobs into it and it keeps them there. And it counts as a stun as well. Uh, talk about Soul Horrors, Spirit Walk is just a huge part of your survivability as a witch doctor. Um, if, if you don't have Spirit Walk, you're going to have a tough time. So definitely get Spirit Walk. Uh, it, it, it increases your mobility, lets you walk through uh, affixes like Frozen, Waller, and you just don't take much damage because it absorbs a lot of the damage that you take. Uh, Haunt is incredibly important. I use Resentful Spirits. I think it's without a doubt the best one. 
Uh, let's see, passive skills. Pierce the Veil is just 20% extra damage. Mana costs aren't really that big of an issue with this build, so Pierce the Veil is very, very good. Uh, Spirit Vessel is also really good. It lowers the duration of Soul Harvest and Spirit Walk, but it also, more importantly, um, if you take Fatal Damage, it essentially restores you to 15% life and gives you immunity for 2 seconds. Um, it can only occur every 90 seconds. That saves you quite a bit, though. Creeping Death is a very important part of this build. It essentially um, makes your dots last for 5 minutes, um, which is, I believe, effectively 2.5 minutes with the Quetzal Coital. But that, with the Soul Harvest, the way that this build works, I'll explain it in a second because it's probably really hard to understand. But the way that this build works is... Uh, what the, the Jade set actually does is it makes it so that your Soul Harvest uh, consumes 30 seconds of the damage over time. Um, and because the the passive ability right here, Creeping Death, makes your uh, passives, or sorry, it makes your Haunt and your Locust Swarm last almost infinitely, which is I believe 5 minutes or 2.5 minutes with the Quetzalcoatl, um, it consumes 30 seconds of the dots and immediately does that damage. So it says here Haunt does 4,000% weapon damage over 12 seconds. Locust Swarm does 1,000% weapon damage over 8 seconds. These dots now last infinitely, and Soul Harvest will consume 30 seconds uh, worth of damage of all the dots on, uh, on, on an enemy, which essentially is a huge burst amount of damage, and it can actually do over 1 billion damage. So Creeping Death is incredibly important. Grave Injustice is also very, very important because every time um, a monster dies within 20 yards, your cooldowns are lowered by one second, uh, which is the most important part. And I'll go ahead and I'll explain this build in, in action. I'll go ahead and I'll actually kill some stuff and I'll show you what you actually want to do when you fight things because it's pretty specific. Um, besides that, I'm trying to think of anything else really important that you want for this build. I can't really think of it. I mean, the Jade Harvester set is the most important thing without a doubt. Um, you want to make sure you have that six set because that's that's pretty much the way this build functions. You need to have that six set or it's just it doesn't work. Um, and, and that's it, really. That's the most important thing. Everything else is fluff. You know, extra damage for that, extra damage for the weapon, uh, the bracers, the offhand is more mitigation. You know, that's extra damage right there. But you can actually one-shot Torment 6 champion packs. Um, and I'm going to go to an interesting place. We're going to go to Whimsy Shire. Just because it's really colorful and exciting. Whoops, this is the wrong zone. Uh, old Ruins. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Old Ruins. I'm going to go to Whimsy Shire. I'm going to show you what you want to do with this build. Because it's very specific. It's very easy to play. Once you get used to it, super easy. You can always just, you know, spirit watch just for more mobility, more movement speed. So what you want to do when you actually get into the zone is you want to be able to zone in without dying. You want to, uh, when you get in here, first of all, you want to group up a bunch of mobs and then you want to, you want to cast your uh, piranhas ability because what it does is it causes everything to group up like that. And also don't forget that they're... Uh, taking a lot of extra damage now because it's doing 15% extra damage plus my strong arm bracer, so essentially 35% extra damage. Once you do that, uh, what I usually do is I cast uh, Locust Swarm, and what that does is Locust Swarm will be cast on a mob and then it just spreads forever essentially. And uh, it does damage over time, but more importantly is when you go ahead and group everything up and you cast Soul Harvest, it consumes the dots and it does an incredibly large amount of damage. So we'll try it again. Piranhas, you cast um, Locust Swarm. You have to wait a second for it to spread, and then boom. Soul Harvest, and it just fucking destroys everything. Um, so here's a champion pack. Champion packs are a little bit more complicated. Um, and this is, of course, a personal style. I'm sure some people disagree with the way that I play this build. Champion packs are a little bit different. Same thing, you want to cast, uh, you want to cast your Piranhas. You want to go ahead and you want to cast your Locust Swarm, but also you want to cast Haunt on a champion pack. And then you want to cast your Soul Harvest. And it actually should pretty much one-shot it. We'll go ahead and try it again. And Soul Harvest, uh, again, consumes all the dots. And when you cast, cast Locust Swarm, it's usually enough to kill Trash instantly. You don't need to put Haunt up on Trash because it doesn't have enough health when you Soul Harvest. But uh, when you're killing a champion pack, you want to cast Haunt on it because Haunt is a much bigger dot. And... Um, it's just going to uh, it's going to be a lot more effective. Uh, I also like to click on these clouds. Any clickable, any uh, chest or, or body on the ground will give you 10 seconds of essentially double damage. This is what lets you actually one-shot Torment 6 champion packs. This is Torment 6, which is the highest difficulty. So let me try to find another champion pack and see if we can actually one-shot it. 
And that's the way this build works. It's really, really simple. You just spirit walk. Again, your cooldowns are constantly being lowered. Um, so you should be able to stay in spirit walk pretty much most of the time. And uh, it's it's pretty simple. It's not a very difficult build. This this should be able to be one-shotted pretty easily. Remember, you have to keep Haunt up on all of these and then cast a... Um, what's it called? Soul Harvest. Let's try to find a yellow pack really quickly. If not, then that kind of sucks. But let's see if we can find one really quickly. No, oh, that's not a champion pack. And again, killing trash really easy. You don't need to cast uh, Haunt on trash because, again, it doesn't have enough health. Whereas uh, champion packs have way more health. If you just cast um, Locust Swarm on Trash, it should be able to die pretty much instantly from one Soul Harvest, just because of its lack of health. And uh, this build is, you know, again, you're you're relatively squishy as a Witch Doctor, but considering the fact that you're constantly in Spirit Walk, you really honestly shouldn't be... Oh, wow, a Legendary. You really shouldn't honestly be um, taking that much damage, because Spirit Walk um, gives you a crazy amount of survivability. There's another bear. Let's see if we can one-shot this champion pack. So, again, Torment 6, loot the cloud for double damage for 10 seconds, cast the um, piranhas, go ahead and put dots up, and then... Ah, oh, didn't quite one-shot it. That's too bad. Man, I really want to one-shot this champion pack. It's just so fun to, to go around. This build is um, not as high overall DPS as a Pet Witch Doctor build, but the burst damage is incredibly high. It just does 1 billion damage burst. The problem is Soul Harvest has a fairly long cooldown, so you actually have to wait a little while um, before the cooldown expires. So if you actually take a look at the damage per second, it's not as high as you think it would be, but it's really, really crazy burst DPS, which is what makes it very, very strong, is for killing champion packs in one hit. If you go to a, like a Torment 6 boss, it usually takes four or five hits in order to uh, four or five bursts of soul harvest in order to kill the um, in order to kill the boss. However, um, you know each the cooldown is like ten plus seconds, so it's actually thirty to forty seconds. Whereas some builds can do damage per second a lot quicker. There we go. So that's pretty much the way the build works. I mean, this is pretty much all of Whimsy Shire. It's pretty simple. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it, I mean, well, I guess I wouldn't say it's self-explanatory, but um, once you get used to it, it's really, really easy to play, and um, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's very interesting. So um, hopefully this helped you out a little bit, and uh, more videos will be coming very, very soon. So if you enjoyed this, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, also check out the the live stream if you haven't uh, heard of it. Twitch.tv/slash Good Idea Gaming. And besides that, thanks for watching. And I'll be back.